He knows what I mean. All right. Our new sound man back there is learning how to run the sound system. So let's give him oodles for that, huh? Huh? Yeah, that's good. Or is that good? I'm not sure. All right. I want to thank everybody for that generous gift they gave. Uh, Judy and I thank you very much for that. We greatly appreciated it for our pastor appreciation. And uh, I'm sure we'll find good use for it. So, announcements. Adult Bible study. I'm thinking of moving it back to 7 o'clock, Joe. Is that okay? Doing music practice first? Sure. Okay. And then we'll be in line with our... Uh, what the rest of our stuff out there says on it. But yeah, we don't have to get here until like 6.15 because it only takes us, what, 30 minutes or so. And that gives a few minutes to get started early anyway. On it, okay. Second one, Awanas. Tuesday night is flashlight night. And the following Tuesday is PJs and pancake night. So if you want a pancake, sneak in on that night and you can get a pancake. Here's the December calendar. Jim, are we still on for the ninth? I was just going to let you know. It doesn't look like the ninth. Okay. Cross that one out at the moment. All right. December 12th, Festival of Light Night at Awanas. The 16th, we'll have an Awana meeting where we're going to be setting up the Awana store. So if you want to come help set up the Awana store, you're always welcome to do that. The following week, the 19th, is our store night and halfway party night. 22nd is the candlelight service. On the 24th and the 31st, we will be having just service only, no Sunday school on those two Sundays. And that evening, it's the New Year's Eve party. So if you've never been to the New Year's Eve party, come and join us. Our goal is to try to make it to midnight. Well, we've always made it to midnight. But there are some that never made it to midnight. They, what do you want to say, got sleepy before then. So anyway, we always look forward to welcoming in the new year, out with the old, in with the new. And of course, the life books are still back there for people to take on it. We gave 19 uh, of our tw goal of 25. I think we were at 19. So... Christmas boxes, you know. So we got pretty close to our goal. All right, so any other announcements that we need to know? Announcements about snacks. There's a sign-up sheet in the back for that if you want to sign up to do that. And uh, I can't think of any others right off the bat. Clean up the church. Clean up the church, that's right. There's a sheet back there for that. We have to thank Randy and Carla because they come in on... And Danny, yes, they come in here a lot of times on, on Friday or Saturday night and clean this church up, and none of us even know it. We don't even know they've been here. They sneak in. That's all we know, isn't it? Not it. Okay, and Steve, you can come in. Oh, you're waiting. I got it. Okay. All right, Joe, I'm going to turn it over to you. I thought I may, could do a Thanksgiving one more turkey joke, but <laughs> Judy told me, no, don't do those. So now I have to think of some Christmas jokes, won't I? You know, uh, I like them too. <laughs> there was a short video we were going to sh show. It's a a newscast from Russia. And it's like a CNN type, what they do, really likened to our CNN and CBS. And they are showing the, the Gideon Bibles and the little New Testaments. And the, and the commander of the Wagner group, who had taken Bakhmut, said their soldiers had found these New Testaments there in Bakhmut that the Gideons had presented, were, were storing there, 
and their soldiers started reading them, and they passed them out throughout the, uh, their soldiers, and, and they, they were losing their, their morale to fight. And so they got this whole special thing on, on the damages the, the New Testament causes to their soldiers from reading it. And we're going to show you that next week and probably and try to get uh, an interpretation in English from Russian. So in the meantime, we're going to do give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us and now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. That's true. Thank you for that. All right. Above all powers, above all kings, Above all nature and all created things. Above all wisdom and all the ways of man. 
You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind the stone, you lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind the stone, you lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all crucified and laid behind the stone you lived to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, 
When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. These are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored And these are the days of trials Of famine and darkness and sword Still we are the voice in the desert crying Prepare ye the way of the Lord Behold he comes Riding on a cloud Shining like the sun At the trumpet call Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee And out of Zion's hill Salvation comes And these are the days of Ezekiel The dry bones becoming as flesh And these are the days of your servant David Rebuilding the temple of praise And these are the days of the harvest the Fields are all white in the world and we are the laborers in your vineyard Declaring the word of the Lord Behold he comes Riding on a cloud Shining like the sun At the trumpet call Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee And out of Zion's hill Salvation comes Behold he comes Riding on a cloud, shining like the sun At the trumpet call and lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee Out of science here, salvation comes <coughs> The 
There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's here, salvation comes. Amen. Isn't this today? There we go. It was off. Okay, so yes, we're in Matthew, uh, starting 9.37 through 10.4. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore for the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And when he had called up unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of these twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus and Libius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Short one today. And of course, <clears throat> we just got through with the Sermon of the Mount, and on the Sermon of the Mount, of course, this is what followed afterwards. After he'd given that sermon, he then called his 12 disciples together and he sent them out. And he gave them the power to be able to heal, be able to talk, be able to basically do everything he was capable of doing, you know. And what we're going to get in today is kind of the message that he gave to them as they went out, okay? So let's open in a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we do thank you, Lord. We thank you, first of all, for the Sermon on the Mount and what the message that he gave to us and to his disciples, Lord. But today we're going to look at the message he gave his disciples and that message applies to us today, Lord. So we just ask for the words to be spoken and our hearts to be open in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me give you some propaganda news. You guys need to know some propaganda news, don't you? Like, no actual Christian would endorse a Republican. Did you know that was an article in the news? It was in the Prince's Free Zone articles. So, never heard of them before. But this is one of their articles they put out this week. It says, prominent Christian leaders endorsement may derail presidential aspiration. Oh, the other one, Christianity in America is just a money-making scheme. And guess who told us that? The Pope did. Now, do you think the Pope is a money-making scheme? 
I do too at times. The Vatican is the richest country in the world, basically. It's hard to imagine that little area there is a country inside its own, but it is. And then there's a group presses Oregon Secretary of State to block Trump from ballot. And they're trying to get him off the ballot, you know. Him and there's probably some other states that are in the middle of that. So we'll see how that one goes because technically they cannot take him off the ballot, you know. But we'll see how it goes. Things change. Hostage release delayed by Hamas demanding Israel give aid to northern Gaza. Now, did we not expect this to happen? The first group comes in and then the second group, which they're getting prepared to release to them, then they increase the demands, don't they? A man of their word, right? Well, we, in the morning, this is what they put out, saying that they were not going to release them unless Israel sent more aid to the northern part of Gaza, which Israel had already did. They had sent in, I don't know, what they say, 197 trucks or something like that. Of that 197 trucks, there was only like 15 or 20 that Hamas let get to the northern part. So Hamas was now in the process of complaining about it. But Israel came back and said, well, that means you broke the agreement. We're going to attack you again. So by the end of the day, Hamas decided to give up those next set of hostages. So we'll see how the third set goes in this four-day ceasefire that's happening right now. But Israel probably took the right approach. that If you just don't give them up, we'll just start the war again. I mean, it's just that simple. But uh, we know that the reason why there's this ceasefire, what's the reason for it? So Hamas can resupply themselves, right? That's usually what happens when they want a ceasefire. So anyway, those are just a few of the things that happen in the news. U.S. destroyer enters Chinese territorial waters. Beijing immediately responded. It says, in the mood of further strained, already tense relationships between the United States and China, the U.S. destroyer Hopper entered Chinese territorial waters. Well, this is where Chinese claims the territorial waters, but they're still considered international waters. It's just in the South China Sea. China now claims that's their sea. So now we're having this debate that's going over. Is this the first time we've sent a ship into those waters? Actually, it's not. We had this incident a few months back where we sent a ship in there. U.S. rejects China's claim its warship illegally entered waters in the South China Sea. Now, whether it did or whether or not, we don't really know, but what we do know is that this battle has been going on and just increases the tension once more in the, Middle East, in the, the Chinese area. So now we got China and Taiwan's tension increasing, and the United States is in the middle of that. We got the Middle East. We got Ukraine, which we're not hearing a lot about right now, but Ukraine is also having their problems up there. So that just gives you an idea of what's happening in the news behind the scene while we have celebrated our Thanksgiving. So let's go today over to Matthew chapter 10, where he's getting ready to send out the 12, the 12 disciples, as we had just read. Among this is Judas, the betrayer, right? Now remember, it's interesting that we talk about Judas as a betrayer, but he's given the same abilities that all the other disciples were given. If we go back up here to here, what was he given? Uh, what is it? And then he called his 12 stuff. He gave them power to over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And we always think of Judas as the betrayer, but he was given these same abilities too. He was also given the ability to go out and speak in different groups, you know? And we look at that and we go, well, gee, even though we call him the betrayer, God still considered him a disciple at that time. So it gives us a good picture of when we look as we start to read through this. Remember, he's part of that group. Then 12, the, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, do not go in the way of the Gentiles, or do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Where is he directing them to go? He wants them to go 
just to Israel, the Jews, doesn't he? He's not ready to let them go to the Gentiles. That is coming later on. And as you go preaching, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tonics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker, worker is worthy of his food. What are they supposed to go with? The word of God. Just the clothes they got on, isn't it? That's all they're supposed to take with him. No changes, no food, no sleeping quarters, nothing. Just what they have on. And he sends them out. Now, today, would you go like that? Would you get ready to take a trip and just walk out of here with your clothes on and that's it? No, we wouldn't. We would go and get prepared to take a trip. But yet, God has sent them out. And why do you think he's sending them out like this? To strengthen their faith, isn't he? He wants them to rely completely on him. The same thing he's asking of us is to rely completely on him. And this is what he's asking them to do. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, what does it say? Shake off the dust from your feet. Leave them behind. Don't even think about them. They're the ones that rejected the word. Assuredly, I say to you, it is more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now tell me. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you remember what happened to them? Remember, God destroyed that cities, those two cities completely for what they were doing. Ezekiel 16. Well, first Genesis 1 through 29 tells you that story if you want to know what's happening. Genesis 18:20, we're told that the outcry was great and that their sin was very grave. And yet, we read in Ezekiel this, he says, look. He says, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, Sodom and Gomorrah, fullness of food, abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I took them the way as I saw fit. What was the problem they were having? They were having improper relationships, weren't they? And what did God do? He literally destroyed the city and the people. And you go, wow, as bad as that was, if these disciples came into a city and they rejected it, their outcome was worse in the judgment of God than what these people were doing. And you go, how is that even possible? Because they rejected God's word, didn't they? So in our world today, countries where Christianity is not illegal in 2023. Do you know there's countries where Christianity is illegal? It says re religious freedom is not a given in many parts of the world. According to the Pew Research Center, more than 80% of the world's governments interfere with their citizens' religious worship in some way in 2019. Did our government interfere in our religious worship in 2020? Yep. Yes, they did. They got involved to it. So that number in 2020 was probably more like 100% at that time. But the 10 most dangerous countries for Christians in 2022, Afghanistan, North Korea, Somalia, you can go down the list, Libya, Yemen, what is Eritrea, Nigeria, Pakistan, Iran, and India. Now Sudan. Huh? And yeah, it's on the list too. These are just the first 10 that I've given you here. It says over 360 million Christians suffering persecution in the world. Do you realize that? How many Christians suffer persecution? This is 
Open Door released its annual World Watch List 2023, confirming that one out of every seven Christians in the world suffers high levels of persecution and discrimination for their faith. Have you ever been discriminated against for your faith? You know, so far our country has kind of been immune to it. We haven't had it like other countries have. We know that, what country did you just say? Sudan. Sudan right now, where they're killing Christians. We know that Somalia killed Christians. We know Yemen kills Christians. Pakistan kills them. You can just look at the list of countries that if you proclaim your faith in Jesus Christ, it's a death sentence for you at times. What does it mean for Christianity to be illegal? It says the severity of the laws and the punishments for breaking them very dependent on the specific country. In most cases, it means Christians cannot gather to worship together in churches. Is it legal to worship together in churches in China? Only if you're only the state approved and you got to have your sermons approved and everything else. You just can't do whatever God tells you to do. It means Christians cannot gather to worship together in churches, nor can they publicly express their faith or attempt to preach the gospel, or attempt to lead others to adopt their faith. It frequently also means they simply own in a Bible or talking about Christianity, even among family members in the privacy of our own homes, can result in imprisonment or death. Remember this part where it talks about even among family members, because Jesus has something to say about that here shortly, doesn't he? Thirteen countries where Bibles can only be delivered by e illegal covert operations. Here's countries you can't even give a Bible away in, can you? You have to smuggle them in. I think our brother-in-law, Mike, he did that for a few years. He smuggled them into China. He used to go to China and smuggle in Bibles into there. Afghanistan, Iran, what is that? Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Maldives, whatever that other one's called. You can look down through the list and see countries where it's illegal to even give them a Bible. And you say, wow. You know, some people refer to it as just a book. Well, if it's just a book, why is it so important of a book? 20 top most churched cities. You ask yourself, oh, look who's on the list. Chattanooga, Salt Lake City, you go down Jackson, you know, Wichita, Charlotte. All these are the 20 most church cities that they talk about in the United States right now. I don't see we're on the list, are we? But here's the next list. It says the 20 most unchurched cities. Now, where would you think those unchurched cities would be? How about San Francisco, right? We know San Francisco. How about Reno? How about, uh, let's say, Las Vegas? How about Portland, New York, Los Angeles? You go down the list and you look at them. You would assume that because of the way the city is being run right now, don't you? Most unchurched in those cities. Well, look at the number. In San Francisco, 60% of the people in that city are unchurched. Do they need the Word of God? Absolutely. We talk about the mission field in other countries, but the mission field is right here. We need to reach out to our fellow brothers and sisters or even the unbelievers around us because in those subdivisions around us, there are people who do not know Christ. Here, 20 most de-church cities. Now, what does a de-church city mean? That means of the 40%, remember that was left, because 60% 60 don't go to church. Of that 40%, only 47% of that church, of those people, how's it? 47% don't go to church on a regular basis. So 47 leaves us less than half, so 40%. So less than 20% of the city of Los Angeles goes to church regularly. And you wonder why that town's falling apart. You wonder why there is no compassion. 
Tacoma, Seattle, Tacoma. Look at the list. Reno, Las Vegas. This look, list look familiar? Portland, Denver. Look at the percentage of people of the percentage that we had earlier on this chart. Eh, right here. So Denver, where's Denver at? Only 40% of people don't go to church. So that leaves 50, what, 53%? that supposedly go to church, and of that 53% in Denver, 38% of them don't attend regularly. So it gives you, again, a small number of the community around it. And you want to know why they don't know Christ and why they don't understand what's right and wrong, why they believe in all the stuff that they're being taught of all the, the gay movements, the LGB stuff and all that other it's because they don't have God's word in them. Verse 16 says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as servants and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. Does this not happen today? You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you speak, for it will be given to you in that hour when you, sh when you should speak, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. So when you're in those dire situations, who's doing the speaking for you? Speak what God has on your heart. That's what he wants you to speak. When it says, when Jesus sent the disciples out the first time, he told them to take no money, no food, no sword, and not even a change of clothes for God to provide. Yet later we read in Luke, it says in Luke 22, it says this, but now he who has money, money bag, let him take it, and likewise a knapsack, and he has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. What does he tell them to do? Go prepared. Now when you go out to the mission field, go prepared at that mission field because we've just shown an example that the hearts and minds are not there on it. List of countries which civilian gun ownership is illegal? Well, you expect Cambodia, North Korea, you expect those to be on that list. But then it says countries in which guns are severely restricted. These are the top six. But are we not fighting that battle in this country here today? Of the restriction of guns? We fall upon the Second Amendment, which gives us the right to bear arms. But that is being challenged every day. Now, because they know that they can't get a lot of states to be part of that, how are they tacking it now? They're going and tacking the cities and trying to get the mayors to make the city illegal to have a handgun in them or a weapon of any type. Verse 21 says this, Now brother will deliver you up brother to death, and a father his child, and the children rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. How bad does it get when families turn against families over the word of God? And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the city of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Now isn't that interesting that he says they will not make it through all the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes? We are 2,000 years later past it. Have they made it through all the cities of Israel today? The answer is no. Israel still has, does not follow Jesus, does it? It says, according to the CBS Christian Broadcast System, Christians make up only 1.9% of Israel's population. And the biggest time it grew was in 2020 during the pandemic. 
it grew 1.4%. So if, it's, if today it's only 1.9% before the pandemic, what was it? One plus 1.4, that only leaves, what, 0.5% of the population in Israel knows Christ? Is that not another mission field right there inside the promised land? Simply because of this. And today, disciples and missionaries sent to Israel still have not reached all the people. It says, a teacher is not above his a disciple is not above his teacher, nor servant above his matter. It is enough for a disciple that be, he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Belzebub, which is an idol god, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. So if they call you what did they call Jesus at the time? Here he comes to them. He's healing people. And what did they say? You must be from the devil. Can you imagine that? Um, he's healing them, giving them the message, and yet they say, you're from the devil. That just shows you how people think. Don't be surprised if that happens to you also. Whatever I tell you in the dark... Speak in the light, and whatever you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Whatever you hear in the ear, preach on the housetop. How does the Holy Spirit talk to us? It talks to us through our heart. talks to us through our mind, doesn't it, on that. If you, he's speaking to you, he means you to tell it to him, tell it to others. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to... Destroy both, both soul and body in hell. Who is the person that can destroy both soul and body in hell? God. It's the only one who can do that. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 29 says this, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are more valuable than many sparrows. And yet here people are afraid. They wonder, where is, am I going to live? Where is my next meal coming from? God says, I can provide that. You know, I'm the one who's taking care of you. We just have to trust him. At time. Now that doesn't mean you quit your job, go home and sit in a chair and expect things to happen, you know. But it means God has given you the knowledge, the understanding of what to do. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father is who is in heaven. What do you think about those non-believers who deny Jesus Christ? What's going to happen to them on Judgment Day? Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of what? His own household. I want you to think about that. How can your own household be your enemy? Do you ever think about that? What does God say when you have a non-believing husband and a believing wife? What does he tell the believing wife to do? Stay strong and keep demonstrating to him, right? Hopefully, he will see Christ through you. Can you imagine the battles that may have gone on at times in that household? I know of ladies who have come here who their husband restricted them on exactly how long they could be here. You know? And because we've read scripture with them, they understood that they still had to honor their husband. So he says, you got one hour? Be home in an hour. 
And yet they honored that, didn't they? They were showing Christ to that person. Do not think they come to bring peace. Then it goes on. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Have you ever had a discussion with your children where you say, if this happens, what choice do I have to make? Do I choose my children over God? That's a tough choice to make, isn't it? But God says here, you don't do that. He who receives, he who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. When you receive Christ, you get God. He who receives a prophet in the name of prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. And whoever gives me one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Matthew 11.1 1 says, now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. He sent them on their way. Here's the message he gave them. Expect your relatives when you see them. They may deny you. Expect when you go into towns, the people may not accept you. Turn around and leave, he says. Then it says this. So is the price of being a Christian too high? You ever ask yourself that question? You know? It says it doesn't cost anything to become a Christian. You're, you're right, it doesn't. It's a free gift, isn't it? Salvation is a free gift which Jesus Christ has purchased for us with his own blood. There's nothing we can do to earn or, uh, or merit this marvelous salvation. It is by God's grace alone and it is absolutely free. It costs nothing to become a Christian. But there is a price to pay when you become a Christian, don't you? On it. Those of us who follow Jesus Christ have difficulties and hardships that we would never experience if we were not Christians. Do you realize that? We will be put in trials and tribulations at times simply because of the word of Jesus Christ. So, says a follower of Jesus doesn't lead an easy life. Most of the Jews in the first century thought that coming of the Messiah would usher in a golden age of peace and and prosperity. How many people have you heard this one before from? This is why when it became clear that Jesus did not intend to do that, many of them rejected him as their Messiah. Today, many Christians assume that if they are following the Lord, they are not going to have any problems in their life. This is why when you teach a new Christian, you need to let him know that following Christ may come at a cost at times. They are expecting a personal golden age of peace and prosperity. But this is not what Jesus promises. Instead of peace, he offers a sword. Instead of finding tra tranquility, his people will experience conflict. Those who choose to follow Jesus will not find a smooth, easy path. It will be very hard sometimes. I always tell people and laugh about the fact that sometimes in your tribulation, you ask for peace. What is the worst thing about asking for peace? He gives you more tribulations so you can get to peace, you know? We sometimes look at the other way around. John 15 says this, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is no greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all of these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. They have heard the word, haven't they? 
He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. So, do you realize that 69 churches have been attacked in the first three months of 2023 in the United States? And we go, wow. I don't know what the total is for the year going to be. But 69 churches. So, is persecution happening in the United States? Yes, we just don't hear a lot about it happening, does it? It says the tax were not limited to one particular state or region. 29 states were affected by these incidences. Okay, here's a chart. Type of incidents that happened. Gun-related incidents, bomb threats, arson, vandalism. 76% of what happened was vandalism in those churches. And here's the states that have had this happen to them. And you look around us and you go, wow. Montana, Washington, Oregon, California. What color is it? It's that color right there. That color means three to four incidents happened in Montana alone. You would expect Montana to be a, a state that would never get bothered. For some reason, Idaho hasn't been bothered. You know, but we see that, you know. 29 out of 50 states. That's over half. Does following Jesus come with a, con with a cost? Sure it does. Conflict with your family, your marriage, and even your friends. And the hardest part of the conflict is this. When forced between, between the Lord and another person, what does it say? We must choose the Lord. Have you not lost friends at times when they know that you are following the Lord, they look at you and go, well, you know, when you were younger, you used to do all this kind of stuff. Why won't you do it now? When the choice between doing what the Lord wants us to do and do what we want to do, who should we choose? His will, right? It says, but whatever it costs, whatever price you pay for following Jesus, it will be worth it. Because where is our home? Our home is in heaven. This Christmas season, as we start into it, remember to focus on Christ. Focus in our home in heaven. And when those attacks come at you, slide remarks from people around you, remember, it's not you they hate, it's Christ they hate. The message that you're bringing but he says, persevere. Don't give up, because great is our reward in heaven. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the fact that we can always turn to you. That no matter what the situation is, we know you're there with us. The outcomes may never be what we expect them to be. But Lord, we know they're in your control and your will. We give you the praise and glory. And as these times draw closer to the end, we know that persecution will increase. But we are thankful, Lord, that we know that your hand is guiding and protecting us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know nothing but the blood of jesus that's the mystery and that is the key that jesus used to cure that that gap between man and God the precious blood of Jesus as we go we give thanks for this time of year and all glory to God in Jesus name amen